Good afternoon, friends. This is Sergey Kromchenko, Senior Engineering Manager of SDAT in the past. These days, I help people like you to become a software QA engineers or SDATs from scratch or to improve your existing skills. And today, I would like us all to take a step back and talk about the very basics of the software quality assurance engineering, specifically about bug reports. And let's create a couple of examples of how to write an excellent bug report for UI and for API. And by the way, if you guys are not familiar with some of these terms or you would like to get actual practical experience working for the US-based startup, we are preparing a brand new product for you, which will have a cost between $50 and $150. So you guys would have ability to not only create those bug reports, but also to test new functionality, new features and bug fixes of the US-based startups. I'll give you more details on this video. Let's create those bug reports first. Now let's create a bug report for user interface. Imagine that we are working for Instagram website and today's your day. You are a QA engineer and you need to test user, user actually user page. So whenever you navigate to the user page, imagine that this is the one that you just randomly testing. And by the way, if you ever want to say hi, this is me. Feel free to do so. Whenever you navigate to the user's page, you see that amount of followers is missing. So first thing you do is you always have to, number one, refresh the page. Number two, log out and log back in to make sure you still, you still see an issue or you don't see it. So imagine I've done it, even though I'm not logged in. Let's say I did verify it that um, as a non-logged in user, I cannot see it. As a logged in user, I still cannot see it. And then you would go, go ahead and verify it on the different browsers. So this is a Chrome browser. Imagine you verify it in the multiple browsers. So what do you do next? Well, then you're going to have to file a bug. So let's go ahead and take a screenshot. By the way, I'm on a Mac, I'm using Command Shift 4. So Command Shift 4, you press three buttons together and you will see, uh, you will see the area that you can choose to take a screenshot. So I've chosen it and then I've clicked on the image that was taken or a screenshot. Now let's also point to an issue, uh, to an area of issue. So no one in the world would ever have to ask a question, where is an issue on a screenshot? You simply put it, put an arrow, and whenever developer looks, developers look at it, they will be like, oh wow, okay, no questions asked. I definitely see an issue here. Great, we've taken a screenshot. Now let's move back to our, uh, to our Jira, which is the most, most popular bug tracking system in the world, and let's create a bug report. So first of all, let's click on create and choose the project. By default, it's going to show you the project which you are in and ours is Instagram. Then second one is the issue type. It is not a story, it is not a task, it is a bug. So it is a bug report. Okay, and next is a summary or a title, which is one of the most, actually I would say the most important part of the bug report. You might ask why? Because whenever a developer looks at the ticket, First thing developer sees is the title, which should answer ideally three questions in order to make, clarify things. And those three questions are what happened, where it happened, and under which circumstances. So let's answer it together. So what is happening here? The amount of followers is missing. Where it happens? On a user's page. Under which circumstances? There are no circumstances as we did log in, we did log out, we tried different, different browsers, so there are no circumstances. Simply, every single account that you have tested, including mine, did not have followers. Let's say it that way. So let's go ahead and create it this way. Uh, so the title is going to be amount of followers is missing where on users page on the users page okay so what happened amount of followers is missing where it happened on the users page under which circumstances there are no circumstances if it would be there would be some circumstances when, for example when user is not logged in then you would specify it here but we do not have any 
Okay, let's go ahead and fill out a description. So first of all, we need to add prerequisites. So what are the prerequisites for this bug report? I would say the first, let's see, prerequisites. I hope I didn't, didn't misspell it. Okay, I did not, perfect. So first and the most important one, and probably the only one, is uh, we need to have an existing account and this account should have multiple followers with multiple followers actually it doesn't really matter uh, how many followers so we're just gonna say with followers and we're gonna say amount doesn't matter doesn't matter or it would be more professional to say is not important Okay, uh, then I don't think we have any other uh, any other prerequisites, right? We've navigated to the account that exists, amount has followers, and we do not see them. Okay, and by the way, I do know, in fact, I do know that this, um, uh, this account does have followers, but we just cannot see them at the moment. So, uh, next, what do we specify next? Before we jump into the next one, I want you guys to remember to always make things look beautiful. So. I will make the text of the title bold of this title right here and all of the following ones as well and the following is going to be environment environment so let's also make it bold so we could clearly separate uh, paragraphs or, or different chapters or of our description environment uh, we have tested it in Google Chrome so I'm going to click on Chrome about Google Chrome copy the version Let's see, nearly up to date relaunch to finish updating. Let's say this one is up to date and I did relaunch it and I did retest it, it works, so it did not work. So I'm going to close it and put it into bug report. And I'm going to say Chrome version, blah, blah. And let's say I've also tested it on Safari. I'm just going to put a random number here, but uh, let's say I did test it on Safari with this version and also I've tested it in Firefox because you should test different browsers to make sure it is not broken on a different browsers. I'll put a random versions here just so we would make it look realistic. Okay, great. Now, after we specify an environment, let's specify the, uh, some of the most important parts of the bug report. Steps to reproduce. And let's also make it bold. And the first step is navigate to uh, Instagram.com to, let's say, users page. Okay, Instagram.com slash smile and do it. And by the way, you should always copy, never type because you might make a mistake and developer would will click it and will say, hey, I don't know what's up here. It works, it doesn't even find that user. So you made a mistake. So let's just copy paste it just in case. Perfect. Actually, let's remove it and paste it back. There we go. Awesome. Okay, users uh, to users page. Okay. And step number two, simply observe amount of followers. Observe amount of followers. This is a pretty simple one. After we've, after we've specified that, now we can go ahead and specify expected result. Expected result. And let's don't forget to make it bold to look pretty. And expected result is amount of followers is not visible. And then actual result, which should also be bold to keep the good looking structure amount of followers is visible okay great and i think this these would be the most important ones you could also add some additional notes if you would have them but we do not have any so we will not add those now let's go ahead and fill out all of the fields that we have here so assignee assignee is a developer who's going to work on it in our case let's say we're working for instagram and it's, uh, let's say we do know that this guy, Sergey Kromchenko, even though it's me, he's a developer that works on a particular part of the application. So you know it, you assign it to him. 
Sometimes, it depends on the company, you will simply leave it as automatic, so it would automatically go to the person who will assign developer. In my case, let's say I know and I will assign it to Sergi. Labels. I, do, I will not specify any labels here, but sometimes you would have to specify the part of the application. For example, users page, or yeah, users page. You would specify it. But in our case, we are, we are gonna use it. Next one is Sprint. And in a Sprint, it depends where you want this ticket to go. If you know that this ticket or this bug has to be fixed right now in this Sprint, you would include the current Sprint. And you can see that creating this issue will affect active Sprint scope which means developers would have to do extra work to finish this sprint uh, if you add this ticket or bug report. And I do know I want this to get fixed as soon as possible because this is, a very, uh, this is a major issue in my opinion because a lot of people will, a lot of people really care about the amount of followers they have and if they don't see them, they might freak out. All right, next one, priority. Is it the highest, high, medium, low or lowest? Please let me know in the comment below what is it, but I will say this is a medium. This is not critical, this is not highest because we're not blocked. This is not high as we uh, as some of the less important features are not blocked, less like messages. But it is still not very low priority because a lot of people will freak out by not seeing the amount of followers. So I would put a medium, but it could also be low in, in uh, different cases. Please let me know what you guys think. Should it be lowest, low, medium, or maybe even high? And the next one, QA assignee. So this field will not be in all of the projects you work for. This is configurable field in Jira. Uh, so we did configure it for our case and we will assign a QA engineer to it. And let's say we will assign, uh, let's see, let's assign uh, Sergio Avram. He's, he's our QA engineer. He's going to be testing this application. Uh, story points, uh, story point estimate. Uh, so story point estimate is pretty much an amount of points it would take developer or how much effort it would take developer to fix this issue. I'm going to leave it empty as usually QA engineer will not specify those points. It will be specified by developer in a combination with the project manager or product owner. Uh, okay, reporter is me, we definitely know that. And by the way, you specify different QA engineer if it's not your area of expertise or if you are about to leave for vacation. Usually you would specify yourself. Let's say, let's actually do that. Let's say, oh, I, I accidentally put a wrong person. I should be the QA engineer for it. Since I found a bug, I will test it. Okay, a reporter is me. Attachment, which is one of the most important parts of the bug report. So we're going to drop, drag and drop our screenshot here so everyone would know where exactly the issue is hidden. Linked issues. So we do not have any linked issues, but for example, if you would be testing the application during the release and you would have a ticket to update something related to followers, you would probably specify that this relates to certain ticket that was to update something related to followers. You would specify that, uh, but in our case, we did not have any tickets, so I will not specify any one of them. Uh, restricts to and flag, those are custom fields. We will not specify those, and usually you will not have them in your company. Awesome, after careful verification, after you've built a good looking structure with everything separately and make you made everything very readable, by the way, we could even put, uh, we can even put dashes here to make it uh, look even better to make it look like a list. Great, now we can go ahead and create an issue. This is our user interface bug. They will pop up right here. And to quickly remind you, if we would not specify the sprint, the current sprint, this issue would go to the backlog. And in the future, during the sprint planning, your team would take a look at it and say, oh, okay, we probably gonna fix it this sprint or maybe next one. So it depends. Excellent, we filed a user interface bug report. By the way, if we have people who have never had experience or who need experience of working with the development team, for example, you file this bug report and it will stick here. 
unless you have a development team who's going to fix it. So if you guys are interested, we have prepared a membership that will allow you to work with a development team on a weekly basis. So tickets like this will appear in the NQA status and you will go through details. You will go to the website, verify that the, the issues were fixed and you will move them to column down. And then it will be released to production where you will verify that the issue doesn't exist in production anymore. And then by the end of the week, you will receive a video which will explain how and what bugs you were supposed to find. And this release cycle will repeat on a weekly basis so you could get actual practical experience of working in a startup. If you guys are interested, feel free to join our waitlist right below this video. Okay, and now let's create an API bug report. So we're working for Instagram. This was a user interface bug. Now let's go use a postman. Imagine this. So we're still working for Instagram and Instagram has developed a new feature. And this feature is called groups. And you can create a group and people can request to join your group. And as an admin of this group, you can see all of the, you can see all of the users who are pending to join your group by sending this API request. So let's say I did verify the token is correct, the base URL exists and everything is correct. And I'm going to send the API request to get all pending users. And boom, I'm getting inter internal server error. Although the status is 200, which doesn't make sense, right? You should get 500 if it's internal server error. So let's go, let's take a screenshot. Let's say we did double check everything. It works fine. I mean, all of the requirements are there. We did verify the token. We did verify the base URL. So all, we did verify all of the required headers. Everything should work, but it does not. So let's do it one more time. Let's take a screenshot and point out at issues that we have here. So the first one is we're getting 200 while we're also getting internal server adder instead of all the users that we're waiting for. So there will be two, uh, two issues here. Okay, let's create a bug report for it. So let's come back here and create a new bug report for Instagram. So how do we specify the title, which will answer three questions. What happened, where it happened, and under which circumstances? So what happened? Internal server adder with status code 200, where it happened. Uh, admin pending users, under which circumstances? No circumstances. We have not done anything specific. It's not only, uh, it's not only Postman or some or other API testing tool. It just it's a general issue. So there are no circumstances to specify here. Uh, and the type request is get. So let's create a bug report and say that internal server adder received with status 200 upon sending this request. Okay, internal server adder with 200 upon sending get and that one. Perfect. So this will be very clear for the developer because the developer will know that number one, we're, uh, we're getting internal server adder, adder with status code 200. And we are getting it when we're, when we're sending a GET request to get all admin, uh, to get all pending users. Okay, let's create a bug report. So first of all, what do we create? Prerequisites. Prerequisites. One more time. Uh, prerequisites. Uh, prerequisites. I think like that. There we go. And don't forget to make it bold. Don't forget to make it bold because I want you guys to be engineers. I want you to write excellent bug reports that everyone will love. Okay, so what are the requisites? Uh, prerequisites would be, let's see, existing pending users. So number one will be existing, uh, existing, actually two existing accounts. That's the number one existing, and I'm always misspelling things, two existing accounts on Instagram. Okay, the second prerequisite is 
one account one creates uh, account one has a new group account two requested to join that group okay so made a request uh, so these are prerequisites we have two accounts account one created new group account two account two requested to join that group so then uh, we're gonna have environment and our environment is number one in this case we're going to specify that this is uh, QA environment and the base URL that we have that we have right here the base URL will pull it from the from the to from the environmental variable right there okay so QA environment uh, let's see environment details number one QA environment number two uh, postman that we have used so these would be all I don't think there's anything else anything specific we can specify okay steps to reproduce steps to reproduce and as always if, if you guys notice I'm I always remind people within every single chapter I remind you guys that we need to make these bold just to make it look pretty okay steps to reproduce number one send a get request to this API with admin token so we send this API request with admin token from user 1 and then observe response okay so we did send that API request and by the way you cannot you can notice that I have not specified the postman because it does not really matter it, which API testing client you use as long as you can send that API request uh, so a lot of people in the companies will use different testing clients in our case we use Postman as you can see but other companies might use Insomnia might use something else okay great so observe observe response and then expected result And in expected result, we're going to specify that a response contains a list of pending users who want to join a new group. Actual result. And the actual result is uh, we're getting internal server adder. Internal server adder with status code 200 great so this is exactly what we would do uh, in the user uh, and everything else will be done in the same way as with the user interface bug we assign the developer to it we specify labels if we need to we put it into a current sprint if we would like to if not it depending on your company your project manager will tell you how to act if you find bugs but in our case we're going to add it to current sprint because I think this is important to get fixed right away uh, priority this one getting list of users I would say it's a it, since it's a new feature this would be a well compared with other tickets it would be a medium priority because this is number one it's a new feature that no one is using at the moment and this is a testing environment and number two there are it's not a blocker at all and it's not a lowest priority it is it is a new feature we won't make make sure that people can accept new users in their groups so that would be approximately medium priority but let me know in the comment below what do you think what priority would you specify here and the QA engineer I'm going to put myself as the QA engineer for this ticket and one of the most important parts again this is a screenshot of what is happening all right let's create it and see how it's going to look like
Great. Now we have a two excellent looking bug reports for the user interface and for API. And one more time, if you guys need practice working with this, if you need practice working with the developers, feel free to join our waitlist for the new membership program. So this new product is going to get released on July 1st and we are going to test it with the first 50 people that will join our waitlist. You can find the link right below this video. After the successful test, you guys will be able to sign up for this actual practical experience working for us based startup anytime you want. And how it's going to work is you will join a startup during this certain period of time. There will be no time limit pretty much. Today you want to join, you sign up for the course, you get all the accesses, you get a list of tickets, you test them. As soon as you test them, you move them to status done or to status to do depending if the issue was fixed or if it was not. Then we release it to production, you test it on production, and then I will record the video and show you all of the bugs, all of the bugs that you were, you were supposed to find and, all, and how would those bug reports look like accordingly to those bugs. And if you guys would need any assistance, you would be able to hire one of our specialists by following the link below this video to call an expert. So for the $50 to $150 per month, this is a membership that does not include any of the mentorship or support as we already, already have dedicated courses for those that you guys pay uh, quite a higher amount of money, but you get full support and you get it weekly webinars with us.